Did an attorney or local investor tell you if you've got rental real estate, the only thing you need is a big fat insurance policy and you're taken care of? In this video, I'm going to show you why that information is wrong. And if you rely upon insurance, it could cost you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to give you are nine reasons why insurance may fail you in the event of a lawsuit. And this is what you need to be aware of before you use that as your end-all, be-all strategy to asset protection. Because I hear this a lot. People say, why do I want to go to the trouble of creating these complicated structures, which are really not after you get them set up. They're quite easy to maintain. When all I could do is just go out and buy extra insurance. It's cheaper to buy extra insurance. Well, I tell you what, cheaper is not always better. And if you don't know what's not covered, well, then you're going to be left wide open in the event of a lawsuit. And there are nine things that I'm just going to hit on right now that I think are extremely important that you know, which are not covered in the event of a lawsuit. All right, let me go over and draw them out for you or, or list them out for you. Okay, so what is the, the first issue that comes up? Number one, that it was not covered typically under a policy. Dam tenant damage. All right, so what do I mean by tenant damage? Damage to their possessions. Let's say they have a big screen TV. Uh, they've got a couch and they've got a, a fancy Persian rug, for instance, and a water leak springs underneath the kitchen sink because the angle stop that you put on was not adequately secured. Maybe you're using the shark bites and you didn't push it in hard enough, or maybe you're using sweat and you didn't sweat it all the way around. And so that finally failed, it popped off, and now it flooded the apartment or that flooded that house and it's a result of your negligence. So landlord negligence that damaged tenants properly is typically not going to be covered under a landlord policy. So that's a huge mistake that we make. The second thing that you're going to run into here is tenant discrimination claims. All right. So if you're considering renting the property to someone and you're going through your potential candidates and you're not dependent on your laws, if you have to know your laws, if you don't offer that property to the first person you show it to and you offer it to the third person, that first person could possibly come back and sue you. They could claim that you're discriminating against them for whatever reason they come up with now because you didn't rent them the property. In reality, it had nothing to do with whatever reason they're giving. It's just the fact that you didn't get a good feeling about that tenant and you found someone else, you got a better feeling, maybe because they had better job stability, who knows? But the fact of the matter is discrimination claims are on the rise because landlords are soft targets for these claims. The problem is, is that your policy does not typically cover this. And the thing about policies you need to realize is that people say, well, get a landlord policy, obtain a umbrella policy, maybe get an excess liability policy. So you've got three policies here protecting yourself. Here's your landlord, here's your uh, umbrella policy, and then here's your excess liability policy right here. Well, hey, these two policies typically don't even come into play if the landlord policy doesn't pick up the claim. So these are oftentimes predicated on what's covered here. So if you're not covered up here, then you're not going to be covered down here with these two, um, with these two things. So that's a problem. All right, so what is the third area that's, that, that's going to not be covered under this type of situation? Intentional damage. All right, so if, you have, if there's a claim that you brought intentional damage to the tenant's pre premises or their property, that's not going to be covered under your landlord policy. So, so again, we've got issues. Number four that would come up, earthquakes, right? So earthquake coverage. Uh, is typically not included in your policy, or if it is, you didn't you didn't uh, didn't get that extra rider because the the amount of coverage was so small. So let's say you have a a, a house. There's an earthquake, and the house collapses, and all the tenants' possessions, or possibly a tenants even killed. You think you're going to be sued? Absolutely, you're going to be sued. Why? Because you have deep pockets. Now you're going to have to defend yourself. And they could, elect, uh, could assert that the house wasn't built to earthquake code or wasn't remodeled properly to meet current code because you did the remodeling yourself or the person you hired didn't know what it is. Now you're going to be liable. Another one, the fifth one, is going to be floods, right? Maybe you live in a, in a floodplain or you're around or, or it's near a river or something 
um, but you have levies. You never thought this was going to happen, but it does. And the property floods out and all of the tenant's possessions are destroyed as a result of that. What would be one of the claims that, are, that someone could bring uh, against you? Hey, you didn't tell me that this property was in a floodplain, so I didn't know to go out there and try to find flood insurance, which they probably couldn't anyways uh, for them being in that situation. So there it comes down to, well, maybe you should have notified the tenant ahead of time so then they could have taken potentially different uh, corrective actions or done things differently with their possessions to make sure that if a flood did occur that uh, that house wouldn't flood and they would lose all those possessions and turn around and sue you. So that's something I look at. Number uh, six, environmental claims. Now this is a big one. All right, so what, what am I talking about there? Toxic mold. All right, so toxic mold is a, a, is a problem. Anything that's environmental that's in, in, in your property that a tenant can say, hey, I have now become sick because of X that I inhaled or ingested because of this property that I am now living in. You're going to be responsible for that. I've seen many clients that have been sued over toxic mold. And I'll tell you one commonality with every one of those lawsuits. The insurer said they had no coverage. I've actually talked to insurers about toxic mold. And I've asked them, do you cover these types of environmental claims? The few that said yes were honest enough to tell me it's not worth it because we charge so much for such little coverage. I think $10,000 in potential damages. Hey, you got somebody in your property, you, you have this property in a high humidity area, or maybe your ba uh, bathroom fans don't work, uh, and, and the mold starts to develop in the house, the children ingest it, they're going to bring a claim against you. There's one situation where a client was sued because the tenant created the issue because they didn't hook the washing machine up the proper way because they left out a little rubber gasket. It was leaking, mold developed, and they turned around and sued the landlord. Environmental claims are a huge one that you need to, to watch out for. Seven, breach of contract. All right, so you have your tenant in the property and you have a lease agreement and you decide to move against that tenant to, to, to maybe evict them from the property or you have some other contract with the tenant and uh, you decide, hey, they're not, they're not abiding by their end, so I'm gonna take corrective actions on my own. On my own. Well, that can be a problem for you. Your insurance isn't going to cover you in those situations. Or if you enter into a contract, say with a third party uh, to manage your property or with a contractor to come out and do some work on the property and you don't like what they did and they turn around because you don't pay and they turn around and they sue you, you're not going to be covered under your policy. So those are situations, contract claims, huge source of liability. A lot of lawsuits are typically brought around contract claims and people are shocked to realize, hey, my policy isn't cover me in this situation. All right, eight, retaliation claims. Hope I spell this right. <laughs> uh, retaliation claims that are brought against you because you have a tenant that has really pissed you off. I mean, let's be frank. You've got some tenants are not paying their rent. They in the, in the city allows them to stay there for up to six additional months. And so what you do is you move in and you cut off their power, you cut off their water, you do things because you're like, why should I be continuing to have to pay for services provided to this property and they're not paying me and the state or the city won't allow me to evict them, but they're still making me responsible for all their utilities. So you cut that stuff off. When you take the law into your own hands, you're opening yourself up to retaliation claims. And in those situations, they can come after you and of course sue you and your policy will not protect you. Uh, the ninth one that I put on here, mortgage default. So what's that one? Well, you took out a loan to buy this piece of property. You own the property in, maybe it's Tacoma, Washington. Here, you can't evict tenants, right? And you're trying to get this tenant out. You got this property and it has not been cash flowing because they run down to the court all the time. They have some sob story that allows them to continue to stay in your property rent free. You still have to pay taxes. You still got to pay the utilities. You now can no longer afford to cover that mortgage. So you decide to walk away. Does the city step up and cover that for you because you're providing affordable housing for people, which is essentially free? I think not. You're still on the hook for that. And so in those situations where there's a default on the mortgage, where you decide to walk away, if there's a deficiency judgment that's entered against you, your mortgage isn't going to cover you. You know, I've given you nine aspects here that where a landlord policy will not cover you. And there's more out there as well. We hear about them all the time. Dog bite cases where somebody's been injured because their tenant had what is called a vicious dog and somebody jumps into the backyard. The dog's chained up. The dog bites the intruder 
and then the tenant is sued because they had a vicious dog and the policy, the landlord policy, they had an exclusion that if your tenants have certain types of dogs, Rottweilers, pit bulls, things like that, there's no, they will not pay out or defend you on those claims. Listen, don't fall prey to this. Use sound structuring. Don't rely on insurance. Set up limited liability companies. Set up land trusts to protect your real estate assets. So if something happens, great, the insurance covers you, you got it. But if it doesn't cover you because one of these nine situations has occurred, you're not going to be left holding the bag and then all of your potential investments are going to be at risk. If you want to move this forward and learn how to actually protect yourself against these types of claims, I got a great class I teach every other weekend, my tax and asset protection workshop. I have a link in the show notes below. Click on that link. It's absolutely free for you to attend. But more importantly, when you go there, I'm going to move this along, showing you how LLCs work for your real estate investing. And more importantly, I'm bringing my team with me where they're going to be on there and they'll answer your individual specific questions that you have. So you take the structures I'm talking about and we can apply them to your situations. Look forward to seeing you there.